Hello everyone, welcome. Thanks for attending today's webcast. We're going to be discussing Fishbowl's mobile library tablet application. So I want to thank everyone for answering that poll question as well. Uh, the majority of you actually answer that as you're kind of in the process now of determining your mobile strategy. So hopefully by attending this webinar and seeing the offerings that Fishbowl has for mobile ECM for Web Center, um, we can help you formulate that strategy and actually get some, something implemented. So just quick uh, introductions. I'm Jason Lehman. I'm the marketing team lead here at Fishbowl Solutions. And I'm happy to be joined by my colleague, uh, Kim Nagard. She's our mobile ECM product manager. And today we're going to be talking about the mobile tablet applications that exist that we've created for Oracle Web Center. So here's our agenda. I also want to mention a few housekeeping items. If you do want to ask a question at any time, you can use the GoToMeeting um, interface for that. There's a little question box that you can just simply type your question in that box, and we will see a little icon that will start to blink. Uh, we have someone monitoring those questions. So when we get to the end of the webinar, uh, we'll answer um, to the best of our ability those questions. Um, if, if time allows, we'll try to get to all those questions. Um, so that's the, that's the way to answer the, uh, to ask questions. Also, um, to kind of uh, let to make the one question that comes up is this is, is this webinar webcast being recorded? The answer is yes. So registrants of the webinar will will get a link to the recording um, within a few days of, uh, of um, after we complete this webinar. So here's our agenda. We're going to take a quick look at who Fishbowl Solutions is. Um, also going to talk about a little kind of a historical perspective on the mobile ECM offerings that we we have. Um, kind of an evolution of those offerings over time. Um, also, um, very privileged to be able to share the success story of one of our customers, Banner Engineering. Uh, unfortunately, um, the, the person that usually tells that story um, was unable to join us today, but um, I'll do my best to share their success with rolling out mobile ECM at their organization. I'll then um, kind of set the foundation and the landscape as far as what's driving mobility and mobile ECM in the workplace today. And at that time, I'll turn it over to Kim for the majority of this presentation as she talks in detail about the features, functionality, benefits of Fishbowl's mobile tablet applications. She'll also be giving a demo of that application later on in the presentation. So a quick word about Fishbowl Solutions. So uh, we're an Oracle Web Center content and portal specialized partner. Um, we uh, focus um, strictly on the Oracle's um, technology stack. So we provide value-add software and services to enable you to further extend and leverage your Web Center investments. Uh, we've done a lot of implementations over the last two, year, uh, last two years, including uh, you know, the, the topic that we're talking, to, talking today about in, in mobile ECM. So uh, what I also wanted to talk about is the value-add software and services that we do provide is really helping organizations you know, further use and, and uh, leverage the content that exists in their organization. So obviously that, um, that plays right in, in line with what we're talking about today, being able to extend and uh, um, consume the content on mobile devices. So today we're talking about our tablet application for that. Uh, we also have a package software offering that allows organizations to leverage Web Center content and portal and build a content-centric and portal-based website. That's our internet in a box offering on the top right quadrant there. We also have a Google search, um, Google search adapter integration that allows you to extend and leverage the power of Google Search uh, with your Oracle Web Center-based websites or intranets. We also offer a, an 11G upgrade and migration offering, so taking customers from you know, legacy versions of Web Center and on to 11G. So a quick history uh, lesson, if you will, on the mobile offerings at Fishbowl. Uh, that, those, uh, so our, kind of our development um, really started back in 2010. So as we kind of took a look at the landscape of, of content management and kind of the way the industry was, was shifting or, or um, the direction it was heading, one of the things that uh, quickly resonated was organizations were, were asking about, well, what about consuming content on mobile devices? And really what uh, drove that is Apple released the iPad, iPad in that year. I think it was April 2010. So we started to look about, uh, to think about and, and look into how can we, as a value-add web center partner, um, build, a, build an application that would allow organizations to extend Web Center content to a mobile device. And we had actually um, been working with a customer 
Um, so a long-time Web Center customer kind of came to us with that same kind of directive or initiative, and uh, they wanted to extend Web Center content and the content that exists in their Web Center repository to, to Apple iPads. So we were fortunate to win the business with them. We developed that application um, with them uh, for the rest of uh, 2010. Um, in 2011, they actually rolled that out. So to date, um, this that number actually might even be a little, uh, there actually might be more users than this. They have six, over 6,500 sales reps globally that are accessing and, and, um, and consuming content from iPads to share uh, with their customer base. We were fortunate that year to, to really work alongside them and detail their use case. Um, mobile ECM and, and mobility was a very hot topic, and uh, we submitted um, we submitted we had a submission that actually won the award for a Forrester ground, Forrester groundswell for mo um, uh, mobile um, content management system for employees for internal use. Um, so we're very happy to work with them on that. And then they also won the Oracle Fusion Innovation Award, um, which was uh, announced at Open World that same year. Um, in the 2012 we uh, released a Collaborate mobile application. So Collaborate is the Oracle User Group Conference. And um, we wanted to provide the ability to, for attendees to you know, see our presentations, our list of events, a schedule, and then I'll actually download our white papers and presentations as well. So we released that before Collaborate in 2012. And then our featured um, customer that we're going to talk about today, Banner Engineering, rolled out their mobile tablet application in 2012. And it was interesting in working with them, what really drove their interest is the success that the other customer had with mobile sales enablement as it applied to mobility and their mobile sales force. Uh, we also released our first iPad application for the Apple App Store. And we were very proud of that because Apple's, um, the approval process to get apps through the App Store is, is very strict. So um, it was good to see that, um, you know, that application that we had available um, met and, and uh, you met the standards set forth by Apple for applications on their App Store. Here we are in 2013. We've released the Android application for Web Center and Google Play, um, and we've also released uh, more recently a Fishbowl to Go application. So that's a phone application, and that's a, that's available on iTunes and Google Play as well. So overall, here are the mobile options that currently exist from Fishbowl Solutions. So we're talking about our mobile library tablet app. Um, so Kim will go into the features and functionality and, and details um, of that application. But basically, it's, think of it as a virtual binder where you um, have folders. You can, you can sort content from Web Center content directly on your, on your uh, tablet, um, iPad, or Android device. One other thing that we offer is responsive design services for mobility for Web Center. So ensuring that, based on the form factor, desktop, um, you know, mobile device, tablet, or phone, that the content that you're consuming or looking at, you know, adjusts to your form factor. So making sure that your enterprise, your web center-based website or portal looks good on the desktop, and then as that portal is accessed on the tablet or phone, it, it adjusts so you can still see the relevant content and, and navigate to it accordingly. I mentioned our Fishbowl to Go phone app. Uh, recent, re recently released that as well. Um, that's really been able to access your Web Center content and then search for information. But we've also added some, some new features around um, the capabilities of that application. You can review workflows, for example, uh, you know, approve those or reject those, and then you can also check in content. So you can take a picture with your phone and then check that in, um, get that into um, Web Center content as well. And then we're also, um, you know, we, we've uh, talked to customers and we've done stuff around custom mobile, custom mobile applications. So depending on your use case, we can tailor the application to fit the exact needs of what you're trying to accomplish from a mobility perspective at your organization. But again, today we'll be focused on our mobile library tablet application for Web Center. So first I want to share one success story that we've had with a customer, and that customer's banner engineering. And Banner Engineering is a manufacturer of photo eyes and, and sensors and products for industrial and process automation. They've been in business for, for um, I think it's over actually 50 years now, and they're one of the market leaders in that space. They release each year you know, hundreds of new products, and these products are highly technical. Um, in fact, these products are used by you know, such a wide um, variety and you know, majority of manufacturers out, out in, you know, in the um, in not only in the United States but globally, that a lot of those sensors, you know, date back 50 years and are still being used. 
So that means that as they add new products, their their skew, their overall product skew, has gone up, um, you know, quite dramatically. In fact, they have over 30,000 products today that they still sell and support. The challenge that Banner Engineering was ha was having was really enabling their sales force to to uh, sell effectively. So with all these products, you could, you could imagine that as uh, the distributors and sales reps are meeting with customers. There's so much information for them to share because they have so many products. So when they customer asks about a specific product, and they're um, you know carrying around trunk loads of paper as as, um, as as they've described it, it was hard for them to get to to the, ex the exact product and share that product in detail with the customer. So they really wanted to enable their sales force to to get to the content that was in Web Center. Banner had invested heavily in Web Center. They had a centralized repository of all this high value marketing and sales collateral, and they really wanted to make it easy for the sales reps to access that content and share it with the customers. So I mentioned trunk loads of paper, and so you can imagine, you know, Suburbans or large, you know, trucks, they're, they're actually carrying around these binders of product information. And so when they were meeting with customers, it's like, okay, so what, what binder or what uh, catalog is that in so I can pull it up and show you what the, what the specifics are for that product. Um, and then they were finding that as they were meeting with those customers, if, they're, if they saw an error in the content, um, you know, with a new feature functionality, there was no way for them to, you know, kind of make sure that that content got updated, you know, more accurately. So the content updates for their products was very slow. And if there was missing content and the customer was, uh, was asking about it, um, they had no way right there to, you know, search and, and find anything that uh, the customer was interested in that might have been sort of web center because it was all on paper. And then after they had the meeting, they had to go back and to their office or, or get connected to the network again and, and find the information that the customer requested if they wanted to send that back along to them. So that just was a lag in the overall sales process. It wasn't very efficient. Um, and then once they actually did, did send the content to the customer, they weren't present to actually talk about the value proposition or value add of uh, being there to, to really, um, you know, shepherd through the, all of the new features or functionality about the product and really help tie what the customer's needs were to the way the, the, way the product could help solve their problem. So their solution was to roll a mobile content management application. So they worked with Fishbowl on that. They, um, they rolled the first one out in May of 2012, and that was for the iPad, and that was for their internal use uh, for their sales reps. So sales reps internally accessing the content from Web Center from, from an iPad. They rolled out that same, uh, that same uh, B2B application on the Android in that same year. And then this year they rolled it out to their larger distributor net network um, uh, for the iPad in, in January. So and right now they've, they've enabled about 3,500 total sales reps and distributors with this iPad application. And there's a screenshot there of, of what it looks like. So now there's the, you know, the reps aren't carrying around as much paper. They don't have these binders full of product information or catalogs that they're, they're carrying around to share with customers. Um, they might have the occasional leave behind, but really they're just carrying around their iPad. Um, they're preparing before their meetings with the customer, with the customer products that they have, and the new products that they want to share, for, share with them. Um, they're sorting all that information by the capabilities of the application, and then when they go and meet with the customer, it's a very interactive um, meeting or, or conversation. Um, they can quickly swipe, you know, using gestures to all the various products and, and press, you know, press touch events on the iPad to get to the product, you know, video or, or brochure or, you know, any other collateral asset and share that with the customer right there, um, making it very interactive. What that means for them is that they're actually able to have more sales calls. So the sales meetings are much more efficient. They don't have to spend as much time preparing and um, they are, so that means that they have more time through the week to make more sales calls. Then at the end, um, end of their day, they're preparing for their next meeting. They're not worrying about sending content um, to the customer that they weren't able to share with them during the meeting because actually during the meeting, they can add any of the content that is shared or that the customer is interested um, to an email cart and send, that, send a link to that content directly to the customer right at the meeting. As far as their benefits, the way that they've banners defined it so far is it really provided a true differentiator for the company. Um, it's a very competitive industry that they're in, so they wanted to have um, this ability to, to enable their sales force to sell most effectively against the competition, and they've been able to do that. The competitor, um, I, I guess since that time, it's under, um, Banner has told us that their competitor has a similar offering, but now Banner's actually had this out for over almost a year now, <coughs> excuse me, 
And um, so it's been really provided a, a competitive um, jumpstart for them in the industry. But really providing that anywhere access to sales collateral has been huge for Banner Engineering. Um, the reps, um, while at the customer location, can get that content directly um, from Web Center. If they have a, a connection, they, it, um, they can get that directly from Web Center. If they don't have a connection before they, they go, they can save it in that content locally, and then that content can always sync back to Web Center when they have a connection. But it's really that interaction and that high quality visual display of content that they're being able to share with the customers now and that, all, that content's all being sort of web center. But it's really provided a time saver as well. So um, I mentioned more efficiency. There's not a lot less time that they have to prepare for meetings. But it's really easy to use. Um, it's the application, and you'll see this in the demo, um, you know, with touch events and swipe gestures, you're able to get to content very quickly. You can search for content, and you can also organize content. So that was Banner Engineering's success story. I also want to kind of give a general lay of the land business perspective on, on why we're seeing a demand for mobile ECM and mo mobility in general. And that's really coincided with, as I mentioned, the release of the Apple iPad and other tablet devices. So what, what we're seeing in the industry is that tablets are, are you know, they're, they're within the enterprise now. Customers or employees are bringing them in, they want to use them, and they want to be enabled to use use them alongside their business applications or systems that are in place today. But it's really convenient. So if you think about traveling, for example, um, you're traveling with your laptop, you might also have your smartphone. Um, you know, so as you go through the airport even, you're, you have all the stuff that you're carrying around. If you could just carry around your, your iPad, think about how more, or tablet device, think about how, how much more convenient that would be for you. So the convenience of carrying around a lightweight device that you can quickly turn on and off, it has a long battery life, is really, um, you know, uh, empowered customer or empowered employees to want to use these devices within the workplace. I mentioned productivity within Banner Engineering's use case. That's definitely true as well. So there's, you know, even if you might want to be, if you do need to access, you know, content or email um, after work hours, it's just a lot easier to do that from your iPad or your tablet device. So pr productivity has increased as you, as you kind of, you know, being able to um, do work from home or any other location very quickly and easily. And, and enterprises are making it easy. So it's either there's, there might be a bring your own device policy. They might actually, they might actually give you a tablet device. Um, but in, in most cases, the, the organizations are now enabling their, their employees to use those devices within the workplace. But it's also the applications available. So if you think about all the applications that are available on, on the, on, within Apple and Android, um, you know, employees um, are using applications in the personal life. They want applications for the various business systems they use. And, and those, the vendors are responding with those applications. And then um, mobile device management. So the security built in and the, the ability to uh, make, ensure that the content that might be saved on a device, if for whatever reason, can be controlled or, or wiped off if, uh, if a device is stolen, that can all be managed as well. So we're seeing that rise of, of tablets. And that's really what we're, we're seeing for mobile ECM specifically is Two use cases. So sales enablement, that speaks directly to Banner's use case. Um, the sales enablement side of, you know, making sure that um, sales reps are efficient, they can have efficient meetings and interactive meetings, and making sure that the content that the marketing team is working so hard on, um, make sure, and they want to make sure that it's being used, can get surfaced to the, to, to the people that will actually be presenting that content to the customers. So as far as features are concerned, um, you know, being able to store that content in offline mode and then connecting, uh, making sure that that content is always accurate once uh, a sync can be conformed back to, back to Web Center. Um, make, so you're always sharing the most accurate and up-to-date information. I also mentioned the email cart, being able to send that information directly to customers during meetings. But the, the fact is you're really sharing that information uh, by this very visual 3D platform. In Banner's case, you know, showing very complex technical schematics or being able to rotate. Um, you know the various products and show show very from a you know show show all the details of the product from a, from an actual device instead of a piece of paper, and the long battery life. So again, the convenience being able to travel around with that thing and, and not have to worry about uh, recharging it as much as you would your laptop. So really, the the benefit on the sales enablement side is the the increase of sales sales rep pro, um, efficiencies. We're also seeing um, a lot of interest in field service. So if you think about field service, that you have uh, Field service technicians out out in the um, out all over the place. They're servicing equipment, and the they have their laptop. They might want to pull it up and look something up. The the actual location of, of uh, where they might be servicing the equipment might not be conducive for that. 
Uh, I mean, you think about going up into a, a, a skyscraper that's being built or a, a radio tower or anything like that, you're, not, you know, you're probably not going to carry around your laptop with, with you and bring it up there, but you might take your tablet. So what we're seeing is those tablets um, being, being used directly on the site of where the service is being performed. Again, you're being, you're being able to access that content that's so critical to be able to service equipment um, from Web Center or from the, the, uh, the content repository. And, and you know, making sure that um, you know, the, always having the most accurate and updated information is critical because um, as, you're, as you're looking to service that equipment, if you're carrying around a binder of paper, um, you, might not, you might not have the most, um, most up-to-date um, you know, troubleshooting guide or whatever it might be to actually service and repair that equipment. So there's a lot of benefits in the portability and access of, of accurate content coming directly being pushed down or being accessed directly from the tablet device from, from Web Center content. So with that, I'm going to be turning it over to Kim, and as we transition here, I'm going to open up the second poll question. So if everyone wants to take a few moments to, uh, to answer that question, and then I'll be, uh, be turning it over to Kim. So Kim, one of the our poll question here is as far as standardized standardizing on a particular mobile platform. So, um, you know, I talked a little bit about Apple and, and Android. Um, based on what I know, it's kind of the market is kind of split right now. There's both. There's a lot of Apple users, but there's also a lot of Android users. Is that fair? Yeah, I would say that's fair. That's the majority of. Um, I would say the most common things we see are either BYOD or standardizing on one of those two platforms. I mean. We've Spoken to a couple of people who are doing BlackBerry, but for the most part, it's either Apple or Android. Okay, and based on the way people are answering, um, right now, the most of the respondents are saying Apple, Apple iOS. Um, a lot of organizations saying they don't have a BYOD policy, and you know that that kind of plays with you know organizations haven't really started to. You know, figure out what's the best way to enable our users. If we do have a BYOD policy, what does that actually mean? Um, and so that's all things that, as an organization, you have to consider as if we're going to enable our workers or employees with um, with mobility. How are you going to provision all the devices? So I'll be closing the poll here. I'll give it ten more seconds. Looks like, <coughs> excuse me, everyone's had a chance to answer. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. And again, the results are um, the majority of you, well, the highest um, as far as the, the device being used is Apple iOS, um, with, um, but the majority of you actually answer you don't have a BYOD policy. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Kim. Thanks, Jason. So as Jason mentioned, Fishbowl has experienced extending Web Center um, really in a variety of different ways. And as we've engaged with customers around what their mobile needs are, um, over the last several years we've seen some similar trends. So that's really what led us to develop the mobile library tablet app. Um, seeing a lot of sales reps, field service workers, or other types of mobile knowledge workers um, who really need access to sync and share content from Web Center on a tablet. And this um, bundle is a allows you to take advantage of a ready-built app, and that's customized to your team's branding, navigation, and uh, content needs. And so with that package, you can get up quicker. So as you remember, um, Jason showed how the first, the first time we did this, um, it took almost a year to go from initial concept of, hey, we want to do something mobile with Web Center, to really defining how that should work, what that should be. Um, and now we can roll these out in less than a month. So that's really one of the differentiators of working with Fishbowl is that, um, that time to production is a lot quicker because we've been there, done that. We have a package to get you up and running really quickly. So this is just kind of a high level overview of um, what you could expect to get this app rolled out to your team. So essentially the pieces are defining the navigational hierarchy, how you want content to be able to be sorted, um, what metadata fields are going to drive that sorting. As Jason mentioned, um, the ability to share content um, via email is important. So setting up the page to download the files, skinning, uh, skinning the app, integrating with analytics, signing the app for deployment, and then testing. So all of that can happen within about a month um, using this framework. And, and the reason we can do it so quickly 
if you compare to the alternative is really because the application is already already developed. So if you're going to start from scratch, you'd really be looking at um, about 75 days, give or take some of the features and requirements um, to start from scratch, define features, define the UI, develop the actual application, um, and then roll it out. So your total time to, to deploy would be, again, give or take around 100 days. Um, compare that with getting up and running in about a month. So really, what is the what is this app? And what it is is it's a native app. Um, we have it available for iPad and Android, and, and we call it a mobile content library. And really, it's a consumption tool. So if you think about times when you might have a binder of of documents, times when you might be carrying around a catalog or carrying around bags full of literature, those are the types of use cases that this app is really suited suited for. Um, Fishbowl does have other applications, as Jason kind of overviewed right at the beginning, that do other things integrating with WebSenate. Um, but what we've found in talking to a lot of different customers over the last three years is really when you're dealing with mobile devices, um, it's best to focus on a specific use case and the problem that that application is solving because you are dealing with, especially if you're in front of customers or you're working on people's time is valuable and that you want to help them get the job they're trying to get done as quickly as possible. And by providing a tailored application that's suited for that purpose, um, you're able to do that more effectively. So this application is really focused on that, delivering content to users um, and having that be available both online and offline. So because everything is managed in Web Center, that's going to be your one stop for the official version, the version of record. And then any time there's changes made to that copy, anyone who has the app, that's going to be synced down. So they're always going to have the most up-to-date version. That makes it much easier to make a change or update bullet points or add more content than if you had if you have binders that you're carrying around, then you have to give everyone a new binder, reprint changes, or give them additional pages to add in. That process to make changes and make sure everything's up-to-date and in compliance um, becomes a lot more cumbersome. When you can say, sync with Web Center, you get those updates as soon as you have network connectivity again. And when we talk about managing or interacting with content from mobile devices, uh, one of the most important aspects of that is how, how you actually find and organize the things that you're looking for. So whether that's documents, pictures, or videos, you really want to give users the easiest ability to find, um, find the things that they're looking for in order to do their job. And so with this app, we actually provide several different ways to find and organize content. And the most common one of these is through the use of left navigation. So the left navigation is kind of set up in a hierarchical structure. So you have your categories and subcategories, and all of these are driven by Web Center metadata. So for example, um, if you had a sales team, you generally would segment your content by maybe business unit, and then product line, and then individual products. Um, we've also seen it fairly common for a sales use case is to then again segment that content by target audience. So you might have um, collateral for selling to, say, the insurance industry in one category, and then content targeted at selling to healthcare in another category. And because all the content is centrally managed in Web Center, you can have content showing up in multiple categories without having to store it multiple times. So if you are dealing with a a physical binder, you might have tabs or something like that. You're not going to want multiple things in multiple categories because then it's you know double the copies, double the weight. It doesn't make sense to organize it that way. But with an application like this, you can have things categorized multiple ways. People can find it the way that's easiest for them. Um, and any time that's changed, every no matter which way you're accessing it, you're going to be getting the most up-to-date version with all the latest changes. Um, the navigation structure is completely custom to your uh, metadata values and your use case. So um, similarly for, say, a field service um, use case, if you have your standard operating procedures, you can segment that out by your business user. That navigation is going to be shared across um, the users for your app. So it's kind of provided uh, everyone who downloads the app would see a similar navigation. But let's say that um, someone's a technician who only works on electrical projects um, each individual user then has the ability to show or hide different aspects of the navigation. So if 
if I'm a sales rep and I only sell widgets A and B and I don't deal with C and D, I can hide those so I never even see that in my navigation and I can get to only the things I need most, the most as quickly as possible. So in addition to the structured left navigation, um, users can also locate items by entering keywords. So this provides metadata and full text search. Um, so users can enter, enter a term for what they're looking for, search across the entire content repository, uh, and then see all the items that have that word in them. So this is important for um, finding things quickly, especially if you maybe know what you're looking for, but you don't necessarily know what category it is in, as opposed to, I want to see everything that has to do with the product. You can navigate right to that category. Maybe if you're not sure what category something is in, um, the ability to have a search was, was an important thing. And this is actually something that we implemented um, in conjunction with Banner Engineering. Um, they requested that users not only be able to navigate using the left navigation, but also if they just want to type in the word, be able to type that in and see, see the items that pertain to that item. And both the search um, shown here as well as the um, left navigation, once you're viewing those content items, you also have filtering capabilities. So again, this is really all about helping users get to the items they need as quickly as possible and removing, um, removing the clutter so that they can see only the things that they care about. So really what the filters do, generally um, with the implementations that we've worked on, we've seen this be used to categorize things by type. So um, technical literature, presentations, videos. So if I'm going on a sales presentation and I know that I want to show, show a customer a video, I can just click the video filter and then all I'm going to see is videos and all the brochures or case studies, those are going to be out of the way and I can very quickly navigate to all the videos pertaining to one specific product or one specific search term. So um, the navigation provides kind of a out of the box, when you install it you get that navigation and that's what you use to, to find items, but in addition, um, users really wanted a way to be able to set up the content the way that they prefer um, and kind of especially preparing for meetings or having their own favorites and being able to go to those favorites and see those items very quickly. So navigation and search really provide the initial way to, to, look, to get to the items you're looking for. But once you find those, you can add those to your folders um, to get to them later. So folders um, really provide users with the ability to set up the navigation structure that they find most useful. And this can be as simple as just one folder that's called favorites. When you initially install the app, um, there's a favorites folder and you can just put things in there. Or it can be as complex and nested as uh, a sales rep who maybe has a client folder. And in that folder they have all the different organizations that they work with. And you can create subfolders within that. So you might have, you know, three different deals you're working on with that customer and you have a, a folder for each of those deals. Um, and because again it's all centrally managed in Web Center, um, you can you can put particular content items in more than one folder. So if there's a widget A brochure that you want to present to six of your customers and you want to have all your materials for that presentation ready to go in a, in a folder for that customer, you can have that brochure in all six of those folders. And that's not taking up six times the space on your device. It's only taking up one one copy of that that item. And everything everything that's in folders is automatically available offline. So if you're doing a presentation and you're not sure whether you can have internet connection, you can know that those things will be available whether or not you have um, whether or not you have cell service or whether or not you can find Wi Fi. And items just get added to folders simply by long pressing them and picking picking that folder. So Jason mentioned um, sharing content via email. Um, and so this is a screenshot of kind of how, how that works. Um, to share content. So basically, the application provides an email cart. Um, when you add something to your email cart, it kind of shows you how many things you have in your email cart. So throughout the course of um, a sales call, you could be adding things to your cart as a customer says, oh, you know what, that's interesting, I want to see that later, or could you send me a copy? You can say add to email cart, add to email cart. You can you know, put as many things in that cart as you want. Um, when you get to the end of your meeting, you can go ahead and um, and look that person up and you can either look them up in your address book or simply just type their name and address right in, right into the app um, and then send them that email. And that's, that's going to send anyone you, you enter um, a link to a secure download site. 
and on from that site they will see links to all the items that you had in your email cart. And this can be configured generally um, we've seen customers use seven days. So um, seven days from the time that you send them that email, they'll be able to go to that site using the using the uh, link that, that's provided to them in the email and they're going to be able to download those items. Now the topic of sharing content generally leads to the next question is about security. So maybe I don't want my content being being shared or I don't want certain people to get at certain items. So the application um, has a couple ways to deal with that. First, it uses standard web center credentials. So anyone using the app, they're going to log in with their username and password and they're only going to be able to see those items that they would have access to in web center. So for example, um, Banner Engineering actually has two versions of their app. They have a channel app which goes out to all their distributors um, that they distribute to only those, those trusted partners. They're going to have a larger subset of content. They also have a version out on iTunes. Um, that version is public, so you actually don't even have to log in at all. Um, and that's going to provide a smaller subset of public content to those users. We've also seen this with um, the medical device manufacturer that we worked with. Um, medical devices, there's a lot of regulation around um, what what devices are approved by the FDA in which countries, so different sales reps, depending on which country they, they sell to, um, depending on which business unit they work for, they only really have permission to see certain items. So when they log into the app, they're not going to see any documents um, that they wouldn't have access to based on who they are. Um, and then, then another use case that's come up multiple times um, around security is um, specifically with field service, you might have your core team um, your employees that might be managing different projects, but then you also might have contractors who you, you contract with to provide an extension to your, your team to work on different equipment, help with construction projects, etc. Um, and those, those individuals may not have access to as many documents as your, um, as your employees would. And so, again, it's important to be able to let people log in and then they're only going to get access to those things which, um, which they should be able to see. So that's, that's kind of enforcing the standard web center security on the iPad or the Android tablet. In addition to that, um, our application has some additional security layers as far as just restricting which things are exposed from a mobile platform. So this is where you have kind of multiple statuses that you can give documents. Normal documents would be things that you can see on a mobile device, you can save them to your local, local library, and you can email them out using the secure download site. But as I mentioned, there might be certain things that you don't ever want someone to be able to email, even if they can view them on a device. So um, you can use metadata to flag items and say, you know what, these items we don't want ever emailed to clients, we don't want them ever leaving our organization. So those items, when you long press them, they won't have the option to email. So, so that prevents them from being shared outside of your organization. Similarly, you can do the same thing with open in. So out of the box, this application allows you to open in other apps. So if you have a PowerPoint and you want to open it in Keynote, you could do that. But if there's um, security reasons that you don't want people to be able to open those app, to open those documents anywhere else, you have the option to restrict that. And the same goes for, um, for online and offline. By default, you can add things to your local library. But perhaps if there's a few documents that are maybe changing very, very frequently or highly confidential, you never want someone to just be able to have that in their local library, that can be restricted. So this package also includes um, some functionality around really creating a customized user experience for your team. Um, and one of, that, one of those pieces is skinning. So part of the package is um, skinning the app to your look and feel. So you can kind of see some examples of that down here, um, different looks, look and feel for the same app. And Fishbowl is flexible on how this happens. Um, we can either do it for you based on you know, this color scheme and this logo. Or we can work with your own creative team. We can work with uh, third-party design agencies um, to kind of achieve that look and feel that really represents your, your brand. And this is especially important when this application is, is serving as an extension of the collateral that you're presenting. So it's not just your team that's going to see it, but it's your customers um, and your clients that might see it. And so you want it to be a reflection of your brand. And so Fishbowl will work with you in, to accomplish this. In addition, the app includes landing pages, and that's what's kind of shown over here. So basically, those are content items that are managed in Web Center. Um, you can change them as often as you like. They get, they get synced automatically with the app, so every time it's connected, if there's a new landing page, 
uh, it'll go out and grab that. And um, there's a separate landing page for online, local, and folders. And it's really flexible as what, how you want to use those pages. Um, we've seen multiple things. We've seen them used as just basically a plain logo landing page, very simple. That's kind of what you see here. Um, it's also been used as kind of a getting started page. So Banner did that. Um, I've kind of shown an example of that right here where when you first log into the app and you're in your landing page, it shows you, oh, this is, this is kind of how I get started. This is how I add things to my local document, how I store them. Um, in addition to that, it can also contain HTML and rich content. So um, you can provide you know, a marketing update each week, promotional information. It can have links back to your corporate website. Um, and those links will just open the browser right on the tablet. The app includes an, uh, integration with Google Analytics. So this allows you to know who's using the app um, and what items are being viewed. So for marketing who's creating a lot of collateral, they might want to know, you know which things are being used most. If everyone's viewing the videos a lot and hardly anyone's looking at the presentations, that's probably something your marketing team would want to know because maybe those presentations need to be updated or maybe they're not valuable and, they, and marketing shouldn't spend time um, putting them together and should spend more time on videos if that's what um, that's what the customers are viewing as valuable. So that helps you to know really what what content is in the app, how often is the app being used, who's using it, how many times have they signed in, um, and all of that is provided with out of the box integration with Google Analytics. So we often get the questions get questions about how this application would actually be distributed. Um, so when we work with our customers, there's multiple ways we can go about doing distribution. Um, and the, for those of you who are familiar with iPad and Android distribution, they, they have a little bit different models. Apple is quite a bit more strict about the controls that they put around apps that run on an iPad and your options for those for distributing those. Um, but even that being said, you can kind of think of two models for distribution. So you can do basically an inter enterprise ad hoc internal distribution. This is where you would have some sort of site set up, probably on an internet, where users would navigate to that site and they would click on the link to download the app on their device. Um, this wouldn't be publicly available. It wouldn't go through any kind of app store. It wouldn't go through any kind of um, Apple or Google approval process. Um, this is generally targeted at um, employee apps where it's really only your own employees that, that would be using the apps. The other option is more of the public distribution. So, you can still require a login to see either all or some of the content, but the application itself would be out and publicly available. This would be, um, for iPad, it would be distribution on iTunes, and for Google, it would be through the Google Play Store. I mean, we have done, as Jason mentioned, Banner is doing both of these, and we internally um, have also done both of these models. So it really depends on your, your own use case and what the audience that you're trying to reach um, and the amount of availability you want the app to have outside of your organization. So for the IT folks in the audience, I wanted to share um, briefly the architecture for this application. It's a, so the applications themselves are native applications, so it's a native iOS application and a native Android application. They use a shared content server component which provides some underlying services to communicate um, from the app to the content server. And certainly, if you have any questions on this, um, we, can, we can take those in the QA session. But this is at a high level what's, what's happening from an architectural perspective. So before I do the demo, kind of recap really, what are the benefits of using an application like this? What is the ROI? Um, so it's really you, quick time to market. You can get this up, you can get it live, you can get it in the hands of your mobile workers, your field service, your sales team very quickly. Um, as you've seen from talking to some of our other customers, they've seen more productivity from their sales reps. They're able to be more efficient, which means they can talk to more customers, they can close more deals. Um, it also means you can decrease the time it takes to service machinery, um, increase your customer satisfaction because, you're, because you can turn requests around more quickly. Um, it reduces your printing costs because you don't no longer have to print out copies. If you make a mistake, you don't have to throw out all the ones with the mistake and make a new one. You can just update that and that will be synchronized and you always have the latest version. I mean, it also expands your adoption in cases where you do want to extend the application outside of your own organization and make it available to maybe partners or customers. And you have 
the ability to do that through app stores, which extend your reach beyond just your own internal channel. Okay, so while Kim transitions to the demo, we're going to open our last poll question. That question is, if you were to implement this application, what would be your primary use case? So again, to recap, we covered off on sales enablement and field service as some of the use cases. We've heard about other use cases, mobile crisis management or communication is another one that uh, we've, uh, we've heard about um, from customers. Um, so just take, take a, we'll have this open for a moment or two here and give you a chance to answer this. Um, any other use cases, Kim, that, um, that we've heard about more recently? Um, legal, providing um, legislators with copies of um, different bills that are in the works, all the requisite paperwork around that um, so that they can take that to meetings instead of having print out binders worth of, of documents. Um, and the key with that one, again, that we've mentioned is that content, that critical high value content that needs to be shared with an outside party has to be accurate. So if you're carrying around paper that was printed a week ago and there's going to be changes made to that, those documents frequently, um, it's very likely that if you're carrying around paper that you're not going to have the most recent copy. So maintaining that content at Web Center and then pushing that down to or having to access from a mobile device, always getting the latest, latest version, that's very key for customers. So based on uh, your answers here, we're going to go ahead and close the poll. Um, the majority of you answered field service enablement. So um, that's good. So I mean, we, we covered off on that one. Hopefully you got a, got a perspective on how you could deploy that from a field services standpoint based on the applications we offer today. So Kim, if you want to close the poll. And then Kim will be switching over to give you a demo of what we've talked about today. All right, so it looks like the majority of you said um, field service might be the area that you're most interested in, so I'll kind of cover, cover off on that a little bit um, since Jason kind of talked about the sales enablement use case um, with Banner Engineering. So essentially when you log into the app, you're going to see something like this. And this is your landing page. Um, you have your online and your local views, and then your folders and your email. So this is your left nav. All of this is driven by metadata in Web Center. So for example, if you're dealing with um, operating procedures, you know, field service, this is the procedure for installing this equipment or servicing this equipment or dealing with um, this certain type of disaster, you can search for, um, you can drill down. This is going to show all your operating procedures. This is going to show all your management processes. And then um, if I can drill down further, now this is going to show me only my strategy in a business planning document. From here, you can easily click on an item to view it. It makes that very easy. Um, now, you notice these are all blue. The application is flexible as far as what content do you require users to download and what content can they opt to download. And by download, I mean have available locally. So in this case, we said standard operating procedures are really important. We want everyone to always have them locally. Um, so blue indicates that they're stored locally in this case. And these are all stored locally. So every time I think, I'm going to get the latest copies of all of these documents. I mean, if I switch over to my local view, I'm going to see the same thing. And you notice the documents don't really switch because all my standard operating procedures are always local. Um, I'll go ahead and compare that to, for example, items by type. If I go ahead and look at brochures, I'll go in my online view, I just have these two brochures. Now if I, or my local view, excuse me. If I go online, um, you'll see that there's a lot more to choose from. So this is everything that's available mobily in the repository for, for brochures. So if I want to add this one to my local library, I can go ahead and say store document. Um, now it's blue, now it's available offline. And if I go over here, I see it's been added to my local library. Similarly, if I want to add one of these items to a folder, I can do that. So if I take this brochure and I go ahead and say store to folder, I can pick my webinar folder and say done. Now if I go to my folder, I can look at webinar and there's the brochure that I just added. You'll notice if I go back to my local view, that brochure also appears in my local view. Anything that's stored in a folder will always be available offline. So if, if you're preparing for meetings or preparing 
um, for a, a service call you have to go make and you want to make sure you have those items and you put them in a folder in order to prepare for that, you're going to know that those things will all, all, always be available online or offline. It's very easy to add new folders. Just click Add New Folder. I'll call this one Webinar 2. Go ahead and add it. I can also put folders in folders. So I can put a subfolder. Now there's nothing in that folder. If I want to go back online, I can add this brochure to that folder. Now it's available for offline viewing, and it shows up in that folder. It's very quick to find what you're looking for using navigation. Also show search, so example, if I search for electric, do that. Here's my construction standards electric document. It shows up in my search results. You can also filter to only see technical literature or to only see presentations. Um, one of the benefits of using an iPad over paper, besides some of the things we mentioned as far as you don't have to print it, it's easy to update, is also the ability to introduce rich content like videos. Um, those really weren't that easy to share before using laptops or using a using something like a tablet. So with with this application, you can also have videos. So this could be installation videos on how do I service this part, how do I install this product, um, how do I fix this wiring, or it can be sales presentations on, you know, this is a promotional video we did for Fishbowl. I can sync this to the iPad um, and usually show this right on the right on the tablet. So the last thing I'll show here before we take some questions is email. So what I will do is I will go ahead and say I want to share my company vacation policy with someone else. I can say email document and a little one will show up over here. Perhaps I also want to share this brochure. Do that. Now I go here, I see those two items. Maybe I decide, you know what, that doesn't really make sense. I don't want to share that. Remove it. Have the things I'm ready to send it. So I can go ahead and enter my email. I'll send it to myself. And then I can go ahead and send that email. So at this point, we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, you can ask a question by typing in the chat window. Yep, so we already have some questions, Kim. So as you kind of transition out of your demo and we get to the questions, I've been monitoring those questions. So I'll go ahead and just start asking them. So again, if you have a question, please type it in the, um, the chat window, the question window there, and, and uh, we'll see if there's a question. We'll see the questions kind of cascade down. I'll ask the question, make sure everyone um, here's the question being that was asked, and then Kim will answer it. So the first one, Kim, as I, I think this is an important one. So how large is Fishbowl's tablet application from a file size perspective? Ah, that's a good question. So I assume you mean the actual app that you install. I, exactly, the application itself that gets installed. How large is that? Yep. So the the app itself is only about it's under three megabytes. So as apps go, that's, that's pretty small, um, and really that's going to be the, the core functionality. And then depending on your use case, it can be it can stay about that size or you can opt to have things be required as downloads. So when you make the initial install, it's always going to be about, about 3 megs. Um, and then as I kind of mentioned with I, when I showed the, the standard operating procedures, um, each client can decide, say there's a certain set of core procedures or core sales collateral that you want all of your users to always have available locally, you can force them to download those when they first open up the app. Or if you want to let people choose what to have available locally, um, you can leave that leave that off and then they can just go out and pick things. And then in that case, in, in either case, the, the total size can, um, that the app occupies on the device is going to be based on how much content is, is stored locally. 
Okay, I'll uh, we'll give you a chance to kind of go through some other ones here, but I did make note of a few more, so as you're looking at the other ones. Um, th there's another question here that, um, so the question is, what are the currently supported versions of iOS and Android? Ah, yep. So it's supported on iOS 5.1 and up, and Android 3 and up. 5.1 and up, and 3 and up. Okay. And I see another question about um, can the device, can the app automatically sync when the user logs in to make sure all the content is up to date? And that is actually how it works by default. So yes, um, when the user logs in, it'll go ahead and sync and make sure that all the content is up to date. And then there's another question here about um, setting in expiration. Can you set an expiration when emailing content? i.e. a person needs to download the content within a certain number of days? And the answer to that also is yes. Um, I think both of all the customers that come to mind have, have set that to a week, um, but you could set it to whatever makes sense in your use case, and, um, and we, do, we do support that type of limiting so that they have to get it within a certain amount of time or, or it becomes unavailable. So I think we touched on this a little bit, but I, the question has been asked, so I want to make sure it's clear for everyone. So the next question is, do users have the ability, depending on the doc type, to open documents in different applications? Ah, yep. So the short answer to that would be yes. Um, out of the box, you can open in. So you could open it in you know, Adobe Reader. You could open it in Kindle. You could open it in um, Dropbox or Keynote. Depending on what type of file it is, the, the device will give you a list of all the, app, all the applications that you have installed that will support that file type. Um, and then, as I also mentioned, that, that can be restricted. So if, if you don't want your users to be able to open your, open your content in third-party apps, you can turn that off. Um, but the application does support it um, in the case that you did want to be able to do that. Okay, so very flexible configurations are provided. Yep. Okay. So we're at the top of the hour, folks, and so I think we'll, um, we'll close the webinar at this point. Um, the last slide here, there's a few uh, different um, action items that, that you guys can take if you want to get more information regarding Fishbowl's mobile tablet applications or any of our mobile applications. Um, and you can try it. So go to the iTunes or Google Play Store and, and look for Fishbowl Solutions. And um, <coughs> excuse me, um, you can actually get, it, get a hold of the applications that we, we showed and some of the other applications that we have available and, and give them a, try, uh, a trial run or, or a demo. Um, but also I'd encourage you to follow up with us if you do want more of a um, a specific demo for your use case. We talk about your use cases. We'd be happy to work through that as well. So there's a link here on the email if you want to send an email to get more information. But again, this is Jason Lehman and, and my colleague Kim Nagard, and uh, we want to thank you again for attending. Um, one final reminder that this, this webinar was recorded, and we will send your recording uh, via link uh, to the webinar so that you can uh, you know, um, listen to it again or pass it along to your colleagues. But thanks again for attending, and have a great day.